Delaney uh, here once again, and hello to all you wogs, free thinkers, and miserable, brainless sock puppets who belong to a user who shall remain nameless. I've been, uh, believe it or not, reading uh, quite a bit of Hubbard's writings lately. Hubbard is an Elrom. Especially Dianetics in small doses, and I have to confess that a great deal of it, and forgive me admirers of Hubbard, a lot of it seems like a bunch of nonsensical garbage. I'm just speaking very honestly here. And I was thinking to myself, how on earth could anyone accept any of this nonsense. I did some more reading and ended up reading the instructions for the communications course and training routines that make it up and it hit me what was going on. And I'm just gonna preface this by saying this is my this is really my opinion as a lay person. Um, and I don't, you know, really have the, the credentials as a mental health professional at all. But this is just, you know, my opinion. And it, that's, that's, you know, I just want to say that. I'm not speaking for any sort of authority here. I know a lot of people probably have realized what I'm about to talk about here. But I think it's worth repeating. And I think it would be a great idea uh, to do your own research if you're unaware. Forget Xenu. We tend to have this obsession with this, you know, galactic overlord Xenu and L. Ron Hubbard's crazy cosmology, but forget him. I mean, it is important, but, and it's a crazy-ass story to be sure and part of Scientology doctrine, no matter how much they want to deny it, but it's not the most insidious thing about this church. The truth is that the insidiousness and the deception begin on day one with the communication course. And I've become convinced that it's absolutely, with a capital V, vital that anyone even thinking about Scientology coursework look at critical information on the communications course. I believe that they should listen to the church's sales pitch about the course's um, benefits. You know, I believe they should listen to the apostates, uh, the people who've been in Scientology and have been through it themselves. And you know, I believe that they should take um, what they know about the training routines to a mental health professional and see what they think about staring at another person for hours on end and trying really hard not to blink excessively or having to acknowledge passages for, uh, from Alice in Wonderland taken out of context without asking any questions. What it is, it's a conditioning of the mind to accept the absurdities of the world that the potential Scientologist is entering into. And it's meant to dull the capacity of the person's mind to think critically and to object. Dull is, is kind of a mild word here because the intention is to actually destroy it and replace it with the feeling of being blown out. You hear Scientologists talk about being blown out quite a bit kind of this feeling of being so incredibly happy, being so blissful, basically having this feeling of being punched in the face by God, I guess is the way I would put it. And basically, uh, this feeling is going to become addictive. And basically, you know, staring at someone for hours on end or doing repetitive thought-numbing actions over and over is apt to create an altered state of consciousness. 
it may even stimulate something like an out-of-body experience.